our YouTube on the earth, we'd like to suggest the three questions. Number one, in verses one and two, do we begin again to command ourselves, or do we need, as some others, the principles of a commendation to you, or letters of a commendation from you? You are our epistle written in our hearts, known and read by all men. What does it mean and what can we learn from here? Question 2 in verse 6. Who also made us sufficient as ministers of the new covenant, not of the latter, but of the spirit? For the latter kills, but the spirit gives a lot. What does it mean in the context and how can we apply it to our life? Last well, question in verse 8. But we all with the unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. What does it mean, and what can we learn from here? Well, Paul was a ministry. Other jealous ministers were disparaging, looking down, or criticizing Paul, and elevating themselves. Like them, Paul showed the temperately his experience testimony and his doing ministry with others for God's glory and for building up the body of Christ in light of Ephesians chapter 15, from whom the whole body joins and knit together by what every joint supplies according to the effective working by which every part that is shared causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. And of 1 Corinthians chapter 10, 31, Therefore, whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. First one, do we begin again to command our service? This is a rhetorical question. We don't command or recommend our service. We don't often share our supreme experiencing testimonies or our doing ministry abundantly with others like some other ministers. We use it temporarily those only for God's glory or for edifying you to the body of Christ, not for our own gains. Galatians chapter 110. For do I now persuade a man or God? Or do I seek to please man? For if I still please the man, I would not be a bond servant of Christ. Second Corinthians chapter 12, 6. For though I might desire to boast, I will not, will not be a fool, for I will speak the truth. But I refrain, lest anyone should think of me above what he sees me to be or hears from me. So disciples in you know, a personal, spiritual, you know, so mysterious you know, testimony, but he doesn't want to share it the more because you might think you know, over it actually happening about. So that's why Paul did whatever as to the Lord, not to man. Whatever you do, do it heartily as to the Lord, not to man. As some others, officials of a commendation to you, or letters of commendation from you, you don't need our commendation letter to you or from you. Why? In verse 2, you are our epistle written in our heart. You are our letter written in our heart. What you are is our commendation letter to and from all men in our hearts. Adam was created in the image of God. Adam committed a sin. His spirit left from him. God's spirit left from him. 
Genesis chapter 1, 26. Then God said, Let us make man in our image, according to our likeness. Let them have a dominion of the fish of the sea, of the birds of the air, and of the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on earth. Genesis chapter 36. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, that it was a pleasant to eyes, a tree desirable to make one wise. She took up its fruit and ate. She also gave it to her husband with her, and he ate. Through Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit dwells in the body of every creature forever. Praise the Lord, chapter 6, 19, 20. Do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit, who is in you, whom you have from God? You are not your own, for you are bought at a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Known and read by all men. All men know and read what you are of the Spirit of Christ. Clearly, you are an epistle of Christ ministered by us, written not with ink, but by the Spirit of living God. You are a letter of Christ, which we minister to, write by the Spirit of God, not with the ink. Not on tablets of a stone, but on the tablets of a flesh, that is, of the heart. The letter is in on your heart, not on tablets of a stone, like the Ten Commandments of the Old Testament. That is the matter of heart, mind, soul, or spirit which is of the Spirit of Christ. First of all, and we have such a trust through Christ toward God. We trust God through Christ. Verse 5, not that we are sufficient of our service to think of anything as being from our service, but our sufficiency is from God. Paul and his ministers doing ministry come from God, not from us. Paul realizes that the ministry that God gave to him was of the Spirit. It is not of me, but God's grace. So, I don't need to share my doing ministry with others or my experiencing testimony much or abundantly. First Corinthians chapter 10, uh, but by the grace of God, I am what I am, and His grace toward me was not in vain. But I labored more abundantly than they all, yet not I, but the grace of God, which was with me. Question 2, verse 6. Who also made us sufficient as a minister of a new covenant? Here, the minister of new covenant in New Testament is compared to the priest in the Old Testament. First Corinthians chapter 11, 25. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This also is often as a drink yet in remembrance of me. So, through Jesus' blood shed is a new covenant. Hebrews chapter 10, 11, 12. And every priest stand ministering daily and offering repeatedly the same sacrifices, which can never take away sins. But this man, Jesus, after he had offered the one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down at the right hand of God. So, that is compared to uh, Old Testament priests' ministry. What's, what are ministries of a new covenant? Any work is to the Lord Jesus Christ, according to the story. While Paul was working as a tent to make, to eat and drink in the world, Paul was working to the Lord as an apostle.
apostle, the word of minister, like an evangelist, pastor, and teacher. We can learn while we are working at whatever occupation, such as a plumber, a carpenter, a physician, engineer, professor, delivery, and so on, in the world, or at the no occupation, like a Peter, we can be working to the Lord anyhow, according to the story. Ephesians chapter 4, 11, and he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers. And book of Acts chapter 18, 3, so because he was of the same trade, tentament, he stayed with them, okay, for by occupation they were tentament makers. First Corinthians chapter 9, 4 to 6, do we have no right to eat and drink? Do we have no right to take along a believing? Why? As you do also the other apostles, the brothers of the Lord, and Cephas, Cephas and Peter, who I did, only Barnabas and I, who have no right to refrain from working. This is an occupation working, talking about that. So whether, whatever your occupation or not, so we can work to the Lord Jesus Christ according to the uh, Spirit of God. Not of the let, not of the letter of law, only descendants from uh, descendants, descendants, descendants from Aaron for priest. Exodus chapter 30, 30. And you shall anoint Aaron and his son, descendants, consecrate them that they may minister to me as a priest, only priest there. So part of the story, how doing uh, uh, ministry of the spirit, we are the active obedient followed of the story. Book of Acts chapter 1 eight. but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witness to me in Jerusalem, in all Judea, Samaria, and to the end of the earth. So we are follow the Holy Spirit. The latter kills, but the Spirit is alive. The latter of law revealed my sin, which leads to death. Even if law, the word of God, who is holy, good, or righteous, because I could not cheat the law by flesh. James chapter 1, 15. Then when desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin, and sin, when it is a full glow, brings forth death. Exodus chapter 9, 5. Now therefore, if you will indeed obey my voice, keep my covenant, then you shall be a special treasure to me above all people, for all the earth is mine. Deuteronomy chapter 11, 29, 32. Now it shall be when the Lord your God has brought up into the land which you go to possess, that you shall put the blessing of Mount Gerizim and the cursed Mount Ebal, 32, and you shall be careful to observe all statutes and judgments which I said before you today. So basic Old Testament is a commandment you should keep. Otherwise, the world will be cursed. James chapter 2, 10. For whoever shall keep the whole law, you stumble in just one point. He is guilty of all. Romans chapter 7, 12, 13. Therefore, the law is holy, the commandment is holy, just, and good. And then, what is good become death to me, certain not of sin. But in my appear sin was producing death in me through what is good, if that's a law. So there, sin through the commandment might become exceedingly sinful. Romans chapter 20. Therefore, by the deeds of the Lord, no flesh will be justified in his sight, God's sight. For by law is the knowledge of sin. So law is uh, indication. The problem we are not able to keep the law by flesh by ourselves. Spirit gives life. By faith we have everlasting life. Fire rebirth of the spirit. 
in God's grace, John chapter 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that for yet to live in me should not perish but have an everlasting life. Ephesians chapter 113. In him you also trust him, after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also, having believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Ephesians chapter 2, 8 to 9. For by grace you have seen saving through faith, not of your service, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should oppose. God's word, not your works. This was me, your works. Verse 7. Uh, but if the minister of death, written and engraved on stones, was glorious so that the children of Israel could not look steadily at the face of Moses because of the glory of his countenance, which glory was passing away. After Moses came out, uh, here is on stones, first of all, we see, minister of death meaning the minister of law, which revealed the sin, the cause of the death. On stones meaning two tablet stones broken by Moses and written by God, Exodus chapter 32, 490. And he received the gold from their hand and he fashioned it with an engraving tool. This is his, uh, his Aaron, made a mold cap. Then they said, This is your God, O Israel, brought to you out of the land of Egypt. So they worshiped the uh, Golden God. Verse 19. So it was as soon as he came near the camp, he saw the camp and the dancing. So Moses' anger became hot. He cast the table out of his hands, broke them at the foot of the mountain, so broken. Then God, uh, Exodus chapter 34, and the Lord said to Moses, cut two tablets of stone like the first one, and I will write on these tablets the words that were on the first tablet which you broke. So God you know, wrote uh, the Ten Commandments again. That one, uh, talking about them, Kunot 12. Glorious meaning the law of the Ten Commandments as the words of God is holy, just, good, or glorious. That's what glorious. The children of Israel now look steadily at the face of Moses, the glory of his countenance, his face. After Moses came out with the tablets of stones from God, he covered the glory on his face with fear. Because the children of Israel were not able to see the glory. Exodus chapter 34, 35 said, Whenever Moses went in before the Lord to speak with him, he would take the veil off until he came out. And he would come out and speak to the children of Israel, whatever he had been commanded. And whenever the children of Israel saw the face of Moses, that skin of Moses' face shone. Then Moses would put the veil on his face again until he went in to speak with God. So different people covering because people could not see God's glory uh, illuminated on Moses' uh, face. Which glory was a passion way? But that glory was a passion way. Another way disappearing. Then is uh, uh, verse 9. If the ministry of a condemnation had the glory, the ministry according to the Spirit uh, uh, had the glory, the ministry of righteousness exceeded much more in glory. So, the ministry according to the Spirit in New Testament, not after flesh in the Old Testament, keeping the law by flesh. All the keeping of Romans chapter 8, uh, verse 10. There is no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, 
who do not work according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. Not be more glorious. The minister of the spirit or the minister of the new covenant is more glorious than the minister of the law. Then verse 10, verse, uh, verse 8, how will the minister of spirit not be more glorious? Then verse 9 here, the minister of condemnation, the minister of righteousness, much more in glory. The minister of condemnation through law to reveal sin has the glory because the law was of God who is gloriously. The ministry of the righteousness by faith in Christ Jesus is superior to the ministry of condemnation in glory. Galatians chapter 15, that is to not the speech. Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of law, but by faith in Jesus Christ. Even <laughs> we have believed in Christ Jesus, that we might be justified by faith in Christ, not by the works of law. For by the works of the law, no flesh shall be justified. Then verse 10. For even what was made glorious had no glory in this respect because of the glory that itself. <laughs> The superior glory in the ministry of righteousness or of new covenant is rather the glory in the ministry of condemnation or of law. Verse 11. If what is passing away was glorious, what remained is much more glorious. The ministry of righteousness or a new covenant in New Testament is much more glorious than the ministry of a condemnation in the Old Testament. Verse 12, Therefore, since we have such a hope, we use great boldness of speech. So we, the ministers of New Covenant, have the Lord Jesus Christ, our hope. First Timothy chapter 1, verse 1. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the commandment of God, our Savior, and the Lord Jesus Christ, our hope, Jesus himself, our hope. Great boldness of speech, we speak the word of God boldly. For example, Paul Barnabas, the bold of speech, book of Acts chapter 14, verse 3. Therefore, they stayed there a long time, first mission to speak boldly in the Lord, who was uh, bearing witness. Uh, uh, to the word uh, over his grace, granting signs and wonders to be done by their hands. <laughs> Verse 13, like Moses, who put a veil of this face so that the children of Israel could not look steadily, continually, at the end of what was passing away. The veil is implied to be blindness or a spirit blindness to Jesus, who is the Lord Christ the Savior. Romans chapter 11, 25. For I do not desire, brethren, that you should be ignorant of this mystery, lest you should be wise in your own opinion, that blindness in part has happened to Israel until the fullness of Gentile has come in. The children of Israel not look steadily at the end of the water of the passion way. The children of Israel did not look at Moses face to face until the glory on the his face was the passion way. Verse 14. But their minds were blinded. They did not see the Messiah or Christ in the Old Testament part until Jesus Christ the Lord and Savior comes in the New Testament time. So until this day the same veil remains unlifted in the reading of the Old Testament because the veil is taken away 
in Christ. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 9. Turning made on to us most of a hidden will according to his good pleasure which he proposed in himself. Until this day, until this day in New Testament time, most Jews still don't believe in Jesus Christ, the Lord and Savior, yet the same bill omnipotent in the reading of the Old Testament, the same blindness to Jesus the Messiah, uh, prophesied in the Old Testament is to most Jews, most Jews still. Because the veil is taken away in Christ, because the blindness is only open, faith in Jesus Christ. Verse 15. But even to this day, when Moses is read, a veil lies on their heart. Even today, when they read the books written by Moses, the Pentateuch, their blindness lies on their heart. To believe in Jesus Christ. 16. Nevertheless, when one turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. When one comes to the Lord Jesus Christ, the Savior in heart, the blindness disappears. 17. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. The Lord Jesus Christ, the Savior, is the Spirit entering to God, the beings of God. God the Father, Son of God, the Spirit of God, in one God. John 4, 12, uh, 24. God is a Spirit, and those who worship Him must worship in Spirit and truth. John 1, 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. The Word was God. John 5, 39. You search the Scriptures, for in them Scriptures, you will think that you have eternal life. And these are they, the scriptures which testify of me, Jesus Christ. John, first John 5, 6, 7. This is he who can by word and blood, Jesus Christ. Not only by word, but by word and blood. So blood shed, that's the new covenant. Uh, and it is the spirit who bears witness, because the spirit truth. For they are three that bear witness in heaven, the Father, the Word is Jesus, and uh, Holy Spirit, and these are three of one. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, where the Spirit of God, where the Spirit of Christ is, Romans chapter 22. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ, Jesus has made me free from the law of sin of death. The spirit made us free. The truth made us free. Where the spirit of Lord is, there is liberty. There is liberty of law and its consequences, such as rituals, customs, or traditions. Book of Acts chapter 15, 10 to 1. Now, therefore, why do you test God by putting a yoke on the neck of a disciple, which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear? But we believe that through grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, we shall be saved in the same manner as they. Romans 8.35 Who is he who condemns? It is Christ who died. And furthermore, it is also reason who is in even at the right hand of God, who also make intercession for us. First John 2, 1, 2, 2. My little children, this thing I write to you, so that you may not sin. And if anyone sins, we have activate advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. And he himself is the propitiation for our sins and not for ours only but also for whole world everyone given opportunity so up to you you may accept it or not you may accept your free will john chapter 8 32 and you shall know the truth the truth shall make you free so where there is jesus and god and all kind holy spirit of christ spirit is free uh, truth makes us free